What's up, everybody in the YouTube world? This is Chris, a.k.a. Barnon 11970 and thank you, as always, for checking out my video. Now, I'm sure by the title of this video alone, I'm going to get more viewers for this particular video. Just the fact that it says the word war in it. Um, I've, With my experience on YouTube, I know that when people see things that are scary, they get very much attracted to it. So the one thing I want to say right off the bat before I get into the whole thing is if you're looking for fear porn, you're not going to find it here. Um, for me, I think channels that specifically focus on fear porn, and what I mean by fear porn is you're constantly talking about, oh, how you're going to die, and how people are out to kill you, and how everything's out to poison you to death, and if you don't buy our products, you're not going to survive, because you notice a lot of them that try and scare you to living death, always thinking about World War Three and Nurabu, and, you know, the apocalypse, and Satan coming to kill you, or Jesus coming to purify the world, they tend to have either sponsors or they sell themselves things that will save you from the very things they're scaring living daylights out of you for. So there's an obvious agenda there, and that's not what I talk about at all. Because even if you see, I do have advertisements on my, my uh, videos, and I'm sponsored by a video game channel. So my sponsor has nothing to do with what I talk about. So if you're looking for fear porn, you're not going to find it here. Now, with that being said, that doesn't mean bad things cannot happen and we shouldn't talk about them. The idea is to not scare people, but to educate people. Because I will tell people right off the bat, from the bottom of my heart, I can tell you right now that there will be no World War III. Because you have to look, not in the way that you, they make you think, not in the way of nuclear annihilation, because if you, if you think from an enemy standpoint, and I've always said that, you can't just think on your own terms because we're rational people. We don't go around thinking, how can we poison a generation of people? How can we go and program a bunch of people? How can we steal from millions of people? How can we kill a bunch of people? The normal person like you and I don't think that way. At least I hope you don't. So we can't think in the same way that these psychopaths do. These are the very same people that can drop a bomb on a city and women and children can get blown to bits and they call it collateral damage. So these are not rational people we're talking about. But if you think from their perspective, if you are one of the elitists, one of the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, what have you, you get your lifestyle, your well-being, your trillions of dollars, if not more, from stealing from the people. They're your cattle. So if you have a nuclear war, you're going to kill probably 90%, if not more, of your cattle. So if you're a cattle rancher and you have millions of livestock and 90% of those livestock die, well, guess what? You're going out of business. So if you think from that standpoint, it's not logical for them to want to destroy everybody. Plus, if you know anything about nuclear technology, I mean, look what two bombs did in World War II. We were the only country at that time to have nuclear capability, and we bombed Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and it only took two bombs to destroy two separate cities where hundreds of thousands of innocent people died. Just fast forward to today, how many other countries have nuclear capability at this point, and how much more powerful are the nuclear missiles that we have I mean, they're guided missiles. You're not taking a plane and flying over and dropping them. You can push, push a button and thousands of miles, some country gets destroyed. Even if they had underground bunkers like they talk about, because I can say, oh, well, you know, they'll do it because, you know, they have underground bunkers. First of all, you don't know how safe those are going to be. If, if no one's ever had a nuclear war, like what could potentially happen today if everybody launched all their missiles. Who's to say it doesn't cause massive amounts of earthquakes, massive amount of flooding, massive amount of destruction of the planet to where the surface of the earth would become almost for thousands of years unlivable if they destroyed the ozone layer or they got earthquakes? Those underground bunkers are going to make nice little pre-made -bur pre burial sites. So I don't, they're not stupid. They wouldn't be able to trick people for thousands of years if these people were stupid. They may appear that way on the outside. But, you know, like I said, they wouldn't be able to control people. Not only control people, but have people fight for them and defend their very selves, those very corrupt people. So it's, it's not going to happen. 
But that doesn't mean they can't talk about it to scare people. Because if you're scared, you're in a lower vibration, you tend to be more depressed, more angry, more focused on paranoia, and everybody's out to get you, and you'll believe anything that they say, so you're easily controlled. So if you see what's going on, especially in the United States of America Corporation, they are trying very hard to start a conflict. Because as you see what they've done throughout the Middle East, if you see what they tried to do with Syria, as you see what they're trying to do with Russia now, with this whole Malaysian flight, how within 20 minutes after that plane went down, they already said it was Russia that did it. And there were newspapers to prove it. So you could see that they're trying to create an agenda. Now, you can't say... They'll tell you about the situations and the events and all that other stuff, but they'll never really tell you why. At least not the way you really have to think about it, and that's what the purpose of this video is going to be about. Because if you know anything about war, war is profitable for those at the top. And I'm going to explain why. Because, first of all, wars cost money. Soldiers do not work for free. People that build the bombs do not do it out of the kindness of their heart. The people who clean up the mess afterwards need to get paid so they can buy you know, their own useless stuff, get food, get all the junk that they need, and pay their bills. So it costs money. Now here's the thing. The people that start the wars never fight them. The higher up people in the world, like the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, all of these people, they will get in conflicts start wars which you and I have to fight for, so they'll send your children to go die for their profit, and they make billions of dollars off of it. Because here's the scam that they don't tell you about. When a conflict is about to start, people like the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, and all these elitist people, they have more money than they know what to do with. They could basically feed the world ten times over if they took all, all their money and gave it out throughout the world. But they don't reach into their own pockets and say, you know what, there's a war and I'm going to fight you, so I'm going to take that money out of my pocket and pay for this and we'll, we'll, we'll settle later. No, they borrow from foreign banks. They borrow the money from places like the Federal Reserve or the IMF or Bank of London, a private bank. Now, the banks will loan to both sides. So the banks are showing you right there, there is no loyalty because they're all about the bottom line, about making profits. So when you're talking about an elitist group, they're borrowing money. Now, here's the part that they don't tell you about. They own those banks. They're shareholders in the Federal Reserve, in the Bank of London, in all of these private banks. They own them. So they're not borrowing anything because they're creating money into existence. And they own the facilities that are supposedly lending them out. Because since the 1930s, and then you can go as far as 1971... No country has a gold standard anymore. And people may not know the significance of that. Basically, and like this gold coin that I have, the way they would work it back in the day is you had to have more fiscal responsibility because you needed gold to back up your currency. So you could not have an unlimited amount, which kept you more responsible. When they took the world off the gold standard, they ended up having nothing to back it up Nothing to stop it and limit it. So just imagine if you have a credit card with a credit limit. You can only go to that credit limit. So you'll only spend to that amount. Just imagine if you had a credit card with unlimited purchase. How far you would go with all the things that you would buy. Especially when you know you don't ever have to pay it back. Instead of buying, you know, going to the movies and buying some groceries, you're going to go buy yourself a yacht. You're going to buy yourself a Lamborghini. You're going to buy yourself a mansion. You're just going to go crazy. Because if you know you don't have to pay it back because you own that credit card company and you could spend as much as you want, you're going to take advantage of it. Trust me, people will do that. So the banks are no different and the people who run the banks are no different. So when they start these wars, they're borrowing money from themselves and creating it out of thin air because there's no fiscal responsibility. So here's the catch. When they create this money out of thin air and they circulate it throughout the land for paying for soldiers, giving it out as loans, all these other things, you have to work to pay it back plus interest. So they are making 100% profit, and if you think know of anything about fractional banking, they're even making more than 100% profit. Because with fractional banking, if they loan $10,000 out, they're allowed to create about nine times that amount and even more visibly made-up money, which, again, people have to pay for. 
So they borrow the money from themselves. And another way to think about it is just think if you own a, a business, if you own a grocery store or a deli and you're thirsty, well, if you're the owner, you're not going to go and pick up a, a beverage, put it on the counter and pay for it. You own it. So you're just going to take it out of there and just drink it. That's what they're doing with the money. The only difference is we have to work and slave and die for their profit. So they're making total profit out of a war. What it also does, it's a great distraction because especially in times of poverty where people are starting to struggle, eventually when people struggle long enough, people start to wake up and they start researching, they start learning about truth. They might even start to revolt. And if you have a war just in the nick of time, just coincidence, I'm sure, coincidentally, it distracts people from their own personal problems in their home to now worrying about being killed or sent overseas or a feeling of patriotism. It's a great way to distract people. And look at what happened in the Great Depression. Well, what also got us out of the Great Depression? World War II. Because unfortunately, wars do create jobs because you need people to build the tanks, make the ammo, get the guns, do the hospital work, do the repair work, do pay the soldiers. So it, it stimulates an economy. So unfortunately, that's the way they make you think. That's how you could stimulate economies. It's not the only way, but it's a perfect way for them because they could profit off of it 100%, make you do all the labor and you to die or have your family die, which also thins out their herd. So people are always talk about overpopulation. Well, what's one of the best ways to lower the herd, to thin out the herd? Well, war is going to kill millions of people. Look how many people died in World War II alone. So you have to understand the purpose of why they want to start this. Because look in this country just alone in the United States of America Corporation. Especially in recent years, we've been, we are borrowing money like it's going out of style. Because if you think about it, it is. Because when you borrow money with 0% interest from the people who own those very same banks, you can only do it for so long. Because you notice how things are getting more expensive Products are getting smaller. They kind of compensate that way. But prices are generally getting more expensive. It's not that they're getting more expensive. It's when they keep printing more and more money, it devalues the currency, which means you need more of it, which means it can't last forever. Because eventually, if you go to the grocery store and a gallon of milk is $30 and a $100 bill buys you four things in a grocery, you know, in your grocery shopping cart, people are not going to be happy. And you, if you notice, they have two options. They can either default on their loans because they've lent them out to places like China and other countries who buy up our debt. They're basically distributing the infl inflation throughout the world. Eventually, they want to get paid back. So they can either default. And you know what happens when you default on a loan? They take the property because they always have you back it up with something of value. And what's the value of this country? Well, that's us, the people, and the land that we live on. Or they can go to war and murder the people that they owe the money to or create a stimulus of the economy and steal the wealth from other people. Because look at what they did to Germany in World War I. When, when Germany lost the war in World War I and they had the Treaty of Versailles, they took all of Germany's wealth. And that's one of the reasons that ended up causing World War II, because people like Hitler came into power because of the fact that the nation was so poor, they were desperate for any savior. And if you know anything about, about Hitler, in 1938, he was voted for the Nobel Peace Prize. So make no mistake, dictators try, and just like any politician, they'll pretend to be your best friend until they can get what they, whatever agenda they want. And then they will cause whatever problems they can, because by the time you realize they're tyrannical people, it's too late. They have too many people backing them up and too much of this fiat money. So wars are for a purpose. They are to make the wealthier even more wealthy. It's meant to wipe out debt, boost the economy, and thin out the herd. We're the herd. And we allow these people to get away with it. And we'll wave our flags with patriotism while they do it. And until we get this concept, things are not going to change. Because that will explain why like this country is trying so hard to start a conflict. Because if you see, especially in recent years, when they talk about 
things like quantitative easing, which is nothing more than a fancy name for money printing. And they talk about the fiscal cliff. You know, you're going to fall off the fiscal cliff, raising the debt ceiling. Well, if you think about it from the standpoints of what I've mentioned, well, they've borrowed trillions of dollars. We're over $17 trillion in debt. The interest alone is about $300 billion a year, which we have to pay for. And if you keep borrowing money and you don't pay back any of your debt and you're not making as much as you owe, you're going to end up eventually defaulting. Because if you have a $10,000 credit card and you only make $500 a month and the credit card bill with interest is, let's just say, $1,000 a month, well, you're not going to be able to pay it back. And if you get another credit card to pay off that one, you're now going to have that balance plus the new balance plus whatever amount they extend you credit for plus interest. And if you keep going in that vicious cycle, eventually you're so deep in debt, they're going to own everything of yours. So is it any wonder why they're trying to start a, a conflict with other countries? Because that's the way to say, hey, don't pay attention to the fact that we're printing all of this money out of thin air and we've borrowed so much money that we owe to other countries and we can't afford to pay it. But pay no attention to that. Wave your flags over here. Here's the nice little distraction. We want you to hate those people. They're the reason why you're suffering. It's a magic trick. They're stealing all your money over here and then not only get you to not hate them for that, but thank them for getting rid of the evil people. And that's what they're trying to do. And it's going to stimulate the economy at the expense of millions of people's lives if it gets really bad. And it's going to end up wiping out the debt. So they go off scot-free of not owing any money. But do you think we're going to get off scot-free? Do you think all our debt's going to be erased? Do you think your credit card that you owe thousands of dollars for, they're all of a sudden going to say, you know what? Forget it. The $10,000 you owe us, nah, you don't have to pay it. That only works for the government's. And the governments make lots of money, and it also keeps their families out of the conflicts. While people like you and I and our family members are the ones that have to go die and kill and then do all the repair work and do all the labor. While they profit off of us, laughing at us the whole time because we're sitting there waving the flags, cheering them. You have to understand the reason why. Otherwise, it's a vicious cycle that never ends. That's why every war has always been the same way. When will people say enough is enough? Because they will keep trying. And I've said that about all these false flag events that are going on. And of course, not everything is a false flag event. But if you see it for that standpoint, if they're trying to get people distracted from the money, because it's always about money and power then you'll see that there's a motive of why they're trying so hard to the point where it's almost so obvious that they're trying to force something to happen. It's going to continue. They're going to kill more innocent people. Because you know what? When they bomb places like Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the prime minister of Japan was not living in either one of those cities. If they bomb a city, it's because people are in it. Because if you have two cattle ranchers that are competing for an area... If you have one cattle rancher over here with 10,000 cattle, one rancher over here with 10,000 cattle, you're pretty much evenly matched, but the money's going to be distributed to both of you. Now, if one wants to get rid of the other, if you just kill the other cattle rancher, well, what if he has a brother? What if he has a wife? What if he has a business partner? They could just take over. But if you destroy his cattle, if you all of a sudden have somebody go out and shoot all 10,000 of his cattle, he no longer has merchandise. He's out of business. That is why when there are wars, they don't kill the kings. They don't kill the presidents. They don't kill the leaders. They kill the people, the herd. Because how do they make their money? They make their money off of you. So if one person having a country here wants to damage the competition of another country here, well, if you kill that president or that king or that dictator... Well, another one will take its place. Remember how they were supposedly going to stop things in Iraq when we got Osama bin Laden? How'd that work out? So if you only kill the leader, another one will replace him. But if you kill its cattle, and you kill enough of them to where they can no longer profit, they wave the flag of surrender. So it's you and I and your children that suffer. And all the while, they're sitting there collecting all of the wealth that they've stolen. From you, 
and the other countries, because once you take them over and you win that battle, you now steal everything from those people. So not only do the victims, the innocent people, get shot at, have probably problems with food and water, get scared to death every day, wondering if this today is the day I'm going to die, and then all of their wealth is taken from them and say, well, well, you know, you were part of that country. I mean, look what happened even in World War II. Look what happened to some of the Ger German citizens. Now, not everybody in Germany was a Nazi. There were people who didn't want the war. And a lot of them got put in concentration camps or shot as traitors. But they were innocent women and children that wanted nothing to do with the war, who, when their cities were being bombarded, those were the people that suffered. And then afterwards, when we all ransacked the country, when Russia went in and raped all the women, and we went in and stole all of their goods, all their paintings and all their valuables, those women and children were left in destroyed cities wondering when their next meal is going to come. Nobody caring about that. This is humanity. This is progress. This is what we want. So keep ignoring it. Keep making fun of and attacking people like me who are taking their energy and making it into something positive by trying to educate people as to why. And see how that changes the world. Because if there ever is a war, and again, I'm not saying there's going to be a nuclear war, but that doesn't even mean it's not impossible. I don't think it's going to happen because it just makes no sense. You destroy the cattle, you have no product. But that doesn't mean that they can't kill innocent people. Because that Malaysia flight, whether it was a false flag event or whether it was real, there were people that were dead. Whether they died in that plane, or they did it beforehand, or they whatever, people died. You want to keep letting that happen? Keep doing nothing. Keep applauding the people. Because you're on the right side. I mean, look what Israel's doing over in the Gaza Strip right now. They have people in Israel sitting on the sidelines, little kids, excuse me, teenagers, like they're watching a film or watching a fireworks show, all sitting out there watching the, the, the Gaza Strip, the Palestinians, all being slaughtered, shooting children on the beach. But yet, you won't hear that in the news, and they won't talk about it. And we're happy with this? We want to look the other way? God, people, when is enough? See, most people will not change until all of a sudden that gun is pointed towards you. And guess what? At that point, it's too late. And then you would have wished you would have helped those other people because you think if you're not going to spend time helping others, you think anybody's going to spend time helping you? We have to have this me, me, me mentality out of our, our conversations, out of our thoughts. The united we stand, the divided we fall. If you can't see that, then you're just, there's no hope. But I'll tell you this much, I will never be that way. And that's why I face the camera, I show myself I face the humiliation, the attacks, the thumbs down, the insults, the laughter, because I care enough to want to help people when others do nothing but want to hurt, and you profit off of that for some reason, or you get a jolly good time out of it. You don't think that if there was a war, you don't think they're going to send your children overseas, or you don't think you're going to be affected? Because let me tell you something, if there ever was a nuclear war, guess what? You're going to probably not be here just as well as I'm probably not going to be here. But the powerful people will be. They may have to spend generations underground. Do you really want to take that chance? So I want to thank everybody for watching this video. I know my videos can be long sometimes, but hopefully you'll get some, some information, some wisdom, even the ability to just stop and think. Because they don't want you to think that. They just want you to use your emotion. They want you to hate those people over there. Don't listen to anything else anybody else says. Don't focus on anything else other than the fact that those are bad people over there. Because we tell you they are. So you have to hate them. And if you don't, then, oh, you're a traitor. Or you're not a patriot. And you'll wave your flags. Yay for killing people. Yay for stealing people's other, their rightful own property. property. Taking away their sovereignty. Yay. You applaud that? that's what you do. And the military at this point, you should be ashamed of yourselves if you don't realize what you're part of and what you're doing. And police that are just doing their job. Because eventually somebody else is going to do their job on you. And you're not going to be able to sit your way and cry your way or pay your way out. And by that point, it's too late. We have time to change this. But that depends on you guys. If you want war, attack people like me. 
do nothing. Laugh it off. Go and party with your friends. You know, I'm going to party like it's 1999? Yeah, well, that's because they thought at the end of 1999, if you know anything about Y2K, that all of a sudden planes were going to fall out of the sky because Y2K with the computer problem, that all of a sudden the computers were going to shut down and all people were going to die. Remember about 2012? Mayan calendar, we're all supposed to die. Well, you know what? We're still here. When are people going to stop allowing themselves to be scared to death by people who use that fear to profit off of you? Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. And that's one of the reasons why I got rid of my old channel, Barn on 11967. I was very angry back then. I didn't know what I was talking about back then. I took too many people's word for things. I listened to the Alex Joneses and the Max Kaisers of the world. Gave into that fear porn. I start stocking food like there's no tomorrow thinking that at any moment we're going to all die. But you know what? We're still here. And there's a reason for that. But they'll scare you for all time because it falls, people fall for it every time. And if you're a scam artist and you could fool people every single time, you're damn well sure you're going to keep doing it and milk it for what it's worth. And that's why, especially in this government that can print money like there's no tomorrow, they are going to borrow as much money as they can, knowing that they are not going to be able to pay it back. They are, they will not pay it back. And all they have to do is start a conflict to wipe out that debt, steal other people's goods, build up an economy, thin out the herd, and you'll cheer them for it. Congratulations. Be careful what you wish for. You may get it. For those of you who care enough, share videos like this. Make videos of, like this of your own. Go to your local politicians. Go to places and expose the fraud. Because knowledge is power, and they don't want knowledgeable people. They want people that will turn on the boob tube, the idiot box, the television, and listen to their agenda programming. Because when they direct you in one specific way and say, this is the only way it happened and there's no other possibilities, that's an agenda, that's propaganda. Because in a real world, there are variations, there are alternative viewpoints. When you go to court, Nobody ever says, this is what happened, if they, especially if they don't have proof. They don't say, well, this is what happened, take it or leave it. No, they investigate it. They look at alternatives. They probe. When was the last time the media did that? All they do is read off cue cards that somebody else wrote for them. And that's why, no matter if you check to, click to CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, ABC, whatever, they're all talking about the same thing. Hello, McFly. Agenda. When are you going to stop falling for it, people? Come on. If we want to change this world, we have to change it ourselves. Otherwise, why are you complaining? For all of you that watched this this far, I want you to say, thank God I'm awake, or thank goodness I'm awake, whichever you want, because I know some people get mad you say that word. So just write, thank goodness I'm awake, so I know you watch this whole entire thing. And if you care, share this video. Favorite. Post it on your social networks. Watch it with somebody who doesn't really understand what's going on. Get people educated. So at the very least, they can question what they're told. And that's how you change things. And that's what they don't want. Thanks for watching, guys. Again, this is Chris. This is my channel, Barn on 11970. Subscribe, comment, and have a great day. And peace to you all. I'm out.